How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now with me making all of these different how to mine videos, uh, a lot of people send me messages asking if the hardware they have is good enough to mine these cryptocurrencies or they aren't able to get this mining program to work properly. It just keeps throwing out uh, errors and just questions like that. And the most times the answer with all of these is that they do have old systems or laptops even and they want to mine with their cpu so that's firstly two problems i do have there firstly a laptop mining in general isn't a good idea because it's an enclosed space it's going to get really hot it's going to wear out your components a lot quicker so firstly laptop mining in general is a bad bad idea so get that out of the way don't use your laptop to mine even if your components are relatively cool it's not really the best idea. You don't want to wear your laptop out that quickly. And then as for the CPU mining, CPU mining, you can make money, but honestly, it's not really that profitable. If you have to calculate in the price of the CPU, the electricity of the CPU, or the amount of coins and profit you get from that, it doesn't really make that the uh, best method of mining. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't mine with your with your CPU. You can make some money off that, which I will go into this video a bit later on. But in general, it's not always the best idea and the most profitable. So I'm going to get into that a bit more later. But now just an example, some of the questions I get uh, is from people who use, again, their laptops or it's a 10-year-old Dell system that they got out of the cupboard somewhere and it's running a Core 2 Duo or even a first or second generation i3. Now, if you do have that old of CPUs, then you shouldn't mine with those systems. You can turn it into a mining rig if it does have enough PCI Express ports, but for just CPU mining, you're not gonna make anything and the electricity cost is going to be way more than the profit you would make. So just getting this out there, if you are using a, a CPU that is anywhere lower than a Core i5 6th generation CPU, then you're not honestly gonna make anything. And even sometimes with these i5s, they're not really that profitable if you have a ryzen system then maybe you can make a bit but that's honestly also up to you uh, because most of these calculations is for 24 7 mining and not just on off on off mining so yeah you're gonna have to see if that's actually worth it to you but with all of that being said let's actually get into all of the statistics and all of that right after this do you live in South Africa and want to get yourself some awesome new gaming products? Well, go check out Rebel Tech. They have extremely low prices and they stock all the major brands like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, Corsair and many more. So go check out rebeltech.co.za to go get the products you are looking for at a low price. Okay, so first off, there's not really a lot of algorithms that support CPU mining in general. The main one, of course, is Kryptonite for like Monero, Electronium, and then also Sumo Coin. So that's the most popular one. But you can also use X11 to mine as well, and then just a few smaller ones. But there's not really a bunch of them that's kind of big, really. So Kryptonite is the most popular one, and we're going to take a look at that. Then secondly, I have to find the hash rates for a bunch of the CPUs. Now, currently, I don't have a lot of CPUs just lying around that I can test all of the hash rates and everything for. And if you go online, there's a lot of people that did some testing with one or two CPUs, but it depends on what hardware they used and what uh, miner they used and all of that. So there's a lot of factors involved. But the best one I got was on the forum of Serve the Home, where Patrick, the one of the administrators, actually did test a bunch of the CPUs. It's most see some higher end CPUs like Xeons and AMD Epics, but he did also do some of the Ryzen's and then also some of the Intel Core i7's like the 7700K and just the 7700. So these are the hatch rates that I'm going to use. It didn't really do anything lower than that, but if you guys want to check it out, you can. I will leave a link in the video description. Also with all of these hatch rates, I didn't really look like he overclocked any of the CPUs 
all of them are on stock so you will be potentially be able to get higher hash rates out of the cpus if you do overclock them but also again that would kind of uh, increase the power consumption for the cpus as well so this is just going to be a base calculation for all of those but if you guys do want to see uh, some potential hash rates you can get there or the crypto mining 24.net where a bunch of people also have submitted their as hash rates for their cpus so you can go check that out but it's a lot of different people there's not really a standard on what miner they used and just what overclocked and everything they used so it's kind of a bit random you can't really see a pattern or anything like that but potentially you can get that hash rates with these cpus but again i'm just going to use the one from serve the home because it's one person that had a standard for all of the different cpus so i know the base is relatively good okay then as for the cpus that i took for these testings i took the three intel cpus the i5 7400 the i7 7700 and then the i7 7700k got their hash rates and also just i threw in their price as well for the cpu and then i got a bunch of ryzen cpus so the uh, cheapest one is going to be the ryzen 5 1500x and then all the way to the ryzen uh, Threadripper 1950X just threw that one in it's not really a consumer grade cpu but more of a higher enthusiast cpu but sometimes the people have them and they would like to use them uh, if they're not working so they can use the cpu to mine a bit uh, along with the CPU chart, I also made a GPU one with some uh, AMD and some NVIDIA GPUs. We're not really going to go into the, the GPUs, but if you just wanted to take a quick look, you can just pause the video and see what they are going for and then just compare the two, the CPUs and then the GPUs and see uh, what the difference would be. But now we have to find out if these CPUs that we have with the hash rates, are they profitable to mine with? And to find that out, I went to minecryptonite.net where they do have a few of the Kryptonite uh, cryptocurrencies where they would you put in your hash rate and they would calculate which one is the mo most profitable and just give you some statistics about all of these, about these different cryptocurrencies. Now, currently when I did my testing, it was that Intense Coin was the most profitable. But just before that, before I did, did actually made all of the graphs, before that, Electronium was more uh, profitable. So it does fluctuate a lot, you know, with the cryptocurrency market. It does differ uh, when you guys watch this now. Uh, Monero could be most profitable again. It will fluctuate the entire time. But the uh, hash rates you have will still be the same. So if you guys just want to calculate that in, you can still go to minecryptonite.net, put in the hash rates of your CPU or just the ones that I will list as well. Now, as for minecryptonite.net, they did have Intense Coin, Electronium, Carbo, Lavier Coin, Sumo Coin, Monero, and Bytecoin. Now, Monero is the most well known Kryptonite algorithm and is also one of the biggest uh, cryptocurrencies at the moment, retail, going for around $300 per coin. So, it is one of the more popular ones, but currently it's not the most profitable crypto night coin to mine because of how popular it is and how big it is the difficulty is a bit too much for the for the coin and for just normal cpu mining so what else there is you can mine uh, intense coin like i said there's electronium sumo coin and a few different ones so again you can just put in your hash rates in uh, minecryptonite.net and just find out which one will be the most profitable for you now then I did calculate the profitability for all of these CPUs and then the most popular one like I said was the Intense Coin. So at the moment with the CPUs that we have listed you can see like for instance the 7700K you would get about $1.41 for 24 hours of mining so it's a full day of mining uh, if you do have a cpu like this it will probably be that you use it for gaming or just your normal work so most of the times with cpu mining it's not going to be 24 7 it's probably going to be perhaps 12 hours throughout the night or just when you're not using it so just calculate how much you would actually make but for instance again the 7700k you would get about one dollar 41 cents 
for a more reasonable one is like a, seven, a 1600 Ryzen 5 CPU that you would actually get a bit more at $1.59. If you go a bit higher, a Ryzen 7 7 1700 would get about $2.11. For instance, my Ryzen 1800X, I would get about $2.34. Cents. Now again, all of these are not overclocked. So if you overclock, then you would make a bit more, especially with that Ryzen, uh, with that Intel 7700K. That one you should be able to get a bit more, and even the uh, Ryzen 7 7700, you can overclock to about 3.8 gigahertz. So that you can also calculate in. And then as for the Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, you would get about five dollars and twenty-five cents. So that is one of the most powerful enthusiast consumer grade CPUs uh, but again it is a bit pricey but now as for a return of investment this is where how long it would take your CPU to mine 24 7 to actually get the amount you paid for it back so for instance if we go look at that uh, Ryzen uh, i7 7700K would take about 240 days to get your return of investment so that's quite a bit high but as for the Ryzen 7 1700 you would only take about 142 days to get your money back for a Ryzen 1800X, it's going to be a bit longer. It's going to take about 229 days. That's again because you can overclock it, so you would it would take a bit less time. So you can you can just factor in about 10% or sometimes 20%. You can just look at that. And then as for the Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, it would take about 190 days. So as from these charts, we can see that it is profitable to mine with your CPU if you do not pay electricity firsthand and perhaps if you already have the CPU. Then I would say put it into mining. You can still use it to make yourself some extra money. But CPU mining is its going to make your CPU run a lot hotter. You're not really going to be able to use your system when it's mining. So you are going to have to leave it for 12 hours or whatever to actually mine otherwise it's not really gonna make you anything now then as we can see cpu mining is profitable it is gonna make you some extra money just for example if we take the 70 uh, 1700 ryzen cpu it gets you about two dollars and eleven cents so that is something that you can make and again you can get your money back in 142 days which isn't too bad but that is also, if you don't pay electricity first hand with the Ryzen uh, 1700, it's about a 65 watt TDP uh, CPU. So you have to calculate that in as well, which will reduce your profitability a bit as well, which in the end is going to take you longer to pay off your CPU. So in conclusion, it is profitable to mine with your CPU, but to an extent. So if you do have some of these CPUs that I mentioned, which are relatively powerful, more gaming grade CPUs, then I would say, yes, use them to mine for a bit. You will be able to get something out of it along if you mine with your GPU. But again, most of these people that use the CPUs to mine don't necessarily have these CPUs. They have, again, a 10-year-old Dell Core 2 Duo system or uh, second generation i3. With those, it's not going to be profitable to mine with and I would not recommend it to do that. It's only if you have newer generations of CPUs that's going to be profitable to mine with. But also, yeah, it's going to take a lot longer to get your return of investment uh, because of the power you have to pay and then the CPU is already relatively expensive expensive and all the other hardware you have so you have to calculate that in then let's say you mine with your ryzen uh, 7 1700 you mine 12 hours a day for th for an entire year you should be able to make your uh, money back within a year and then also you'll be potentially be able to buy a new cpu at the end of that year which is not too bad actually but now again you have to also calculate in that the uh, markets will fluctuate the entire time uh, for instance again like i just saw that uh, at first electronium was more pro more profitable and then intense coin so it is fluctuating the entire time you can't really predict where it is going to go at that stage you can just put it up to mine and then trade your coins and get some extra cash out of that but yeah, that's pretty much it. I just want to show you guys that if you do have an older generation of CPUs, it's not profitable to mine with. It's only with newer generations of CPU and higher end CPUs, gaming grade ones. So if you do have those, then shop for you. 
but otherwise I wouldn't recommend it, especially again, do not mine with your with your laptop it's not going to be worth it even if you have a strong laptop you're going to wear it out way too quickly and you're going to damage it so do not mine with your laptop but otherwise yeah that's pretty much it for this video uh if you guys do have some of these cpus use them to mine make a bit of extra cash but otherwise yeah this is just my personal opinion from some of the tests that i did but you can go check out that for yourself with the minecryptonite.net website and then also some of your hash rates that you get but uh, anyway that's pretty much it thanks for watching guys if you did enjoy this video please like share for comment comment like always and then i shall check all of you guys next time cheers guys